Good day, everyone. This is Pauline Fields, and welcome to DDO Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in DDO and on the tabletop. And please welcome my co-host from Ravenloft, Dracula. Hey now, everybody. How's it going? Hello there, Drac. How are things going on on Barovia? Same mist, different day again. Mm hmm Yeah, that's the way it is. Mm. And especially the way the weather's been lately. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Nice and conducive for mist because <laughs> exactly. lots of rain and <laughs> lots of cold. Yep. Let's head into the game news where our first little thing is it looks like that there is going to be some downtime tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Though probably if you're listening to this, it'll be after that point. But it looks like they're prepping up a little thing called Feywild. That's right. Uh, only a day late, because actually it was supposed to come out today, which as we record this is uh, Wednesday, November the 4th. This was actually supposed to be Feywild launch day. They only pushed it back a day. So we're getting it uh, tomorrow, Thursday, November the 5th, as you said. Downtime uh, scheduled for 9 to 2. We'll see if it comes back up to 2. Uh, it's a big expansion, so we'll see. But hopefully we'll all be playing Feywild tomorrow evening. We can only hope. And see what eats us. That's right. <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Displacer Beast for one. Uh, speaking of the Fables of the Feywild Update 48, we already have the release notes. Ooh, how nice. So let's uh, take a look to see what awaits us in the Fables of the Feywild. Uh, of course... The Feywild has arrived. You are going to journey to the land of myth and fable, a place of wonder and death in Dungeons & Dragons Online's Fables of the Feywild. You're going to meet the Archfey, Mighty Beings, who may help or hinder you on your adventures. You're going to encounter majestic unicorns, mischievous pixies, deadly displacer beast, and fierce formorians. Yeah, that's that's a lot of words right there. All <laughs> in the new <laughs> D&D expansion for Dungeons & Dragons Online. Uh, Fables of the Feywild is going to include 13 new quests, a new wilderness area, a new public zone, a new raid, which will follow in a patch after the launch. Uh, this uh, expansion pack is for characters level 5 to 6 on Heroic Difficulty and, of course, level 32 on Legendary Difficulty. Uh, if you want to access the new Fables of the Feywild expansion, you're going to visit the hut in the storm reach harbor so remember that Is crazy hut? hut that we went to <laughs> we're going back to that crazy hut ah! <laughs> <laughs> exactly hopefully the uh witches won't be there but we'll see we'll see they they might still be around i don't know we'll see who knows i just hope that one witch isn't still hungry <laughs> Exactly. She's always hungry. <laughs> um, elsewhere in our Fables of the Feywild, uh, there was a couple of uh, fixes. We kind of talked about these before. We talked about some of them. I don't remember if we talked about all of them kind of when it was on Lamania, so we'll kind of just go through this uh, quickly. Uh, male shifters are now properly going to use the fiddle animation for bard songs. If you have the fiddle equipped and the bard swashbuckler, uh, different tack no longer has its er erroneous single weapon fighting prerequisite uh the favorite enemy fey is now working correctly which is a really good thing since we're going to be fighting lots of fey probably probably uh, uh favorite enemy fey can now be selected by a ranger when you would normally take the favorite enemy feet again very very good well uh, i don't think the fey are happy about that well probably not but yeah uh, that'll be all right uh all right. the Big thing uh, with the expansion is the changes to the uh, augment system. Uh, we did talk about this a little bit. Uh, we'll just kind of get you up to speed if you didn't listen to that uh, episode, which I think, I don't think it was last week's episode, but it was the one before. I don't know. Uh, everything's running together at this point. But one of the episodes we talked about this, uh, any augment that is not slotted into an item when you log in after uh, the update tomorrow will be updated to both work with the new augment system and reflect the power level. Uh, Kenneth crafted effects at the minimum level of that augment. This is going to happen immediately when you first log in. 
and no other action will be required on your part. Any item that uh, has an empty augment slot when you log in after tomorrow's update will be updated to work with the new augment system immediately. Once again, no action on your part. Uh, any item that has an augment slotted into the augment slot when you log in after the update is going to work exactly as it had before the update unless you choose to intervene and you unslot the augment using a legacy augment unslaughter. Legacy augment, uh, augment unslaughters uh, are a new item that is going to be sold at the house Kaneth Crafting Halls and with uh, Rap Larksong, the general vendor in the center of uh, the Stormreach Marketplace. Uh, that's going to allow you to remove augments from legacy style augment slots and in the process of doing that we'll convert them to the new augment system and then, so action is required on your part for that one yes if you have that's only if you have one slotted in something right it's going to stay the old system if you use one of these augment on slaughters it's going to go to the new system and okay. how, you, how you do that is you buy one of those augment on slaughters Double click on the legacy augment unslaughter, drag the item that you wish to unslot a legacy augment from, select the legacy augment you would like to unslot, click unslot augment, log out of the game, log back into the game, voila, you are done. Okay. And then monsters got a little bit of love, we'll say. Twig blights are now vulnerable to fire, which thank the Lord, I always thought they should be. I'm like, they're freaking trees, you know? I'm like, I'm like <laughs> fire should really hurt them. Should well, really... they didn't get much love then if they're now more vulnerable. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it depends your definition of love, finally. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I always thought that. I'm like, they're freaking wood. Like fire, fire bad to wood. <laughs> Now, apparently, it is. So, well, it's also bad for skin. Well, I mean, sure. <laughs> Some fire and cold resistance on plant monsters that was not supposed to be there has been removed. So, see, they did get some love. They actually got some help. Okay. Some plant monsters got some help. See, so there is your, your good thing, finally. All right. And several shambling mounds now have correct vulnerabilities. Players who own the Fables of the Feywild Collector's Edition will find a level 5 Feywild Muse Bar Hireling uh, in their inventory. First time they log into the character, and that is going to be for each character, if I do believe I am correct on that. So okay. and then if you have the Ultimate Fan Edition, you're going to get a level 30 and a level 5. And these are the new um, hirelings that you're going to get. We're getting new Bard Hirelings. Uh, they're, they're Seder hirelings, if you would like to know, Seder Bard hirelings. And also, uh, if you own the Ultimate Fan Edition, you're going to get another item. That is going to be the Feywild Tuning Fork. That's going to go uh, for each character first time you log in as well. And you might be asking, what the heck is a Feywild Tuning Fork item? That's the fast pass to get to Feywild. You get the Feywild with a tuning fork. Yes, just like you know, we had the Bard Short, uh, the the uh, Sharn boarding pass. We had the Jar of Mist. We're gonna get a tuning fork because a tuning fork. Feywild, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, Feywild will make more sense when I get there. <laughs> I guess. So. <laughs> I guess we'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> and then several uh, Dask creatures in the Masterminds of Sharn. Uh, area will no longer drop empty treasure bags because that is rude. Yeah, okay, it's a little bit rude, but maybe they thought it was rude of us killing them. You know, you're just a glass half full, aren't you? <laughs> I'm noticing that about you through through this conversation so far. I'm 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 seeing your motive for everything, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. I see how it is. Also, a uh, guild and guild officer chat is now being handled differently on the back end. We did talk about this last week, uh, which should greatly improve how quickly guild chat is available after a world restart and how fast it does recover from a uh, reconnection between the game servers and the chat server. Also, uh, text chat messages sent to general advice, trade, party, guild, guild officer, our player-created rooms will now be displayed to you after they go to the chat server and back. 
That means that if you are not connected to the chat server, it is not going to look like you are chatting with your guild. Because you're actually chatting to yourself and nobody else. So it's not that your guild doesn't want to answer you. It's they never saw you. Uh, and this is kind of a weird one. But the launcher now has a remember me for eight hours checkbox. Checking yep. this will allow the launcher to remember your login credentials for eight hours or until you actively choose to log out in the drop down menu of the launcher. And you may think that this sounds a little weird. It but, sounds super weird. But believe it or not, it's very useful. I guess the only way now tell me if this is because I'm assuming Lotro has this now. Yeah, it was added during their okay. last Yeah, but okay. they also had their The only expansion. way I could think that this would be useful is if you're jumping to different servers a lot. Is that why it's useful? Because I can't think yeah. of why you would want this other than that. Yes, because in Lotro, I am jumping to different servers quite a bit. And in the 32-bit in the 32-bit client, mm -hmm. it would the launcher would go back to the to the server selector screen. So that was nice. But the 64-bit client doesn't do it. And so because of that and that I would have to type in my credentials and all that, all that all over again, I had not used a 64-bit client. Oh, when, okay. When this feature came in, yes, I still have to relaunch the thing, but at least I don't have to go around typing the password and all this stuff. So I have a couple of steps saved on the matter. And okay, well, that, that makes sense. Now I do use the 64. So it's enough of a difference that I'm now willing to use the 64-bit client, despite the fact that it won't give me the server selector again when I exit. So, yes, I do use it because of that. Okay, well, that makes sense. I d now, I don't jump back and forth as much in DDO, so... Right, but anyway, yeah. the option's going to be there for you. Right. And that is it for our uh, update 48, Fables of the Feywild expansion. With the expansion comes a couple known issues. What else is new? Yeah, exactly. This always happens. Uh, not too bad. There's only two of them this time. Th that are known now. That Well, that is very true. We'll see when it launches how many more pop up. But as of right now, these are the two known issues. Augments are not currently recognizing their binding status when you slot them into an item, players should not expect to be able to trade items with augments in them that have a bound to account binding state. This will be fixed in the next patch. And also, uh, there is not currently a saga for the Fables of the Feywild. Boo! We do intend to debut a saga in the near future. Boo. We want a saga! <laughs> Boo, I now, say. Boo. Didn't they have... A, a one update delay before they had the saga for Keep of the Borderlands? It seems that was the case, yes. Yeah. It was soon after. I don't think, I think right. you're right. I don't think it was like the first patch after it, but it was like the next one. So, so, so there you go. I hope it, that when they say it's going to come afterwards, that it'll be very soon afterwards. I hope so. Saga's good. Well, that's it. We are going to have an update tomorrow, or if you are listening to... You might be listening to this during the downtime, because that sounds like a perfect time to listen to a podcast. That's because the goal. You, you won't be able to play then? The goal is going to have... If, is, this is going to be available so you can listen while the game is down. So let's head into the DDO Chronicle issue 401. And it looks like we've got a Feywild banner on top of it already. I, I was going to say, I'm guessing this is Feywild. <laughs> I can't think of any place else. I can't be. either. Because <laughs> I, when I was making the show notes, I opened up the Chronicle and I'm like, mm, gotta be Feywild. Of course, as always... Look for Feywild headers on the next couple of Chronicles, and I guarantee you the next couple of screenshots are going to be Feywild. Just throwing that out there. And our uh, community spotlights, uh, nothing because it already took place. It was a <laughs> Halloween event last Saturday, but last Saturday is in the past, so never mind. <sighs> Fansite news, though. DDO Cast is previewing the Feywild. Click over to check out the latest episode from DDO Cast. We got a shout out for our last episode. Teacher Sin uh, takes the Ninja Spy to its limit 
in a new blog post, so check that out. Mickey is showing off the new pre-purchase items uh, with uh, the Fables of the Feywild pack. So click over to check out her blog post. DDO Stream is your first stop to find DDO on Twitch. Brock and friends, meet Simon's Curse. I haven't watched that show yet, but I'm wondering if that's a Castlevania reference. I'm going to have to watch that to see. Sig Trent appreciates Stone. And Brighter Days Ahead tonight is getting spooky. Also, other on Twitch, lots of people are playing DDO. A Dark Crusader is questing on Orion, or Orion, however you prefer to pronounce it. Uh, Noel Day gets closer to racial completionist, and Bel Belnavar, sure, why not? Uh, runs the Night Rebels. Uh, don't forget over on YouTube, lots of people are putting up some DDO content as well. Samus Garobo is shifting away. Lynn Bander is running the Tower of Frost, Pineley's favorite. And <laughs> Deck Gaming is heading to the hills. That's over on YouTube. Uh, we have a Chronicle comment, of course, because we always have a Chronicle comment. What is the most important thing you plan to take with you into the Feywild? Into the Feywild. American Express Traveler's Checks? I don't <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I broke a uh, track. Yeah, yes. well, yeah, I was trying to like think of a comeback for that, and I was just like, "Wow, Pine Leaf actually made a funny joke." Wow. Uh, well, let's see. I don't know. Well, the other first thing that came to my mind was fairy dust, but it's like... makes sense. Because um, I take Phalox, so there. You know, right. when I make a warlock, I tend to take Phalox instead of uh, the type of, of locks you that you like. So, of course, you do. So I might be feel at home there. <laughs> <laughs> you might. You, you just might. Uh, my answer is because the character I plan on running Feywild first with is going to be with you. So the most important thing I'm going to take with me are my daggers. Ah, your daggers. Oh, yes. Oh, in which case, if we go based on the first character, I suppose I should... I should bring plenty of flasks with me since yeah, there you go. I'll be bringing an alchemist and I'll oh, need plenty I just, of those. I just thought you were going to bring stuff for us to drink. But I, I see how it is. <clears throat> well, <laughs> not that type of drinking. <laughs> uh, okay, we, we, fine. We might, we might need some for, well, I guess you don't really, the alchemist. The alchemist tends to break the bottles rather than drink the bottles, but well, that's another sure. matter. You do like lobbing those things, though. I will give you that. Yeah. And we, we do have our screenshot <laughs> of the week. That is from Miriam Table. Poses for the seasonally appropriate screenshot. And it's the 486th DDO screenshot of the week. Uh, that's kind of spooky looking. So that's very seasonable for sure. I'm trying to think of where this is at. I know I've seen this, but I can't think of where it's at but it's an awesome screenshot very spooky and dark dark go, and spooky wow to go with the halloween past we'll say let's then head on and see what is coming in from the dungeon Where apparently there are some dungeon crawl classics, classics coming from Humble Bundle. That's right, Humble Bundle is at it again. Uh, this is a stupid, crazy good deal. Like, there's no reason if you can afford fifteen dollars not to do this bundle. Uh, if you ever wanted to check out Dungeon Crawl Classics, which of course is by Goodman Games, uh, just go now. And do this. Uh, even for a buck, you get a ton of stuff. For $8, you get a lot of stuff too. But for $15, you're going to unlock, I think, maybe minus one or two things, the complete DCC library. For $15. Just just go now and just 
just go do it. Well, well worth it. Uh, the bundle uh, is going to support uh, the American Red Cross. That is Goodman Games' charity partner of choice. So uh, just remember when you do Humble Bundle, uh, we are a, a partner for Humble Bundle. So if you use our link, you can select to give our charity of choice, which is the American Cancer Society, uh, some of the money as well. Uh, you can also choose uh, to give DDO players some money too as well if you'd like. Uh, there's just a little slider you can pick how, how much you want to give. So you can choose, okay, you want this much to go to Goodman Games, this much to go to us, this much to go to the American Red Cross, this much to go to the American Cancer Society, which is our uh, charity of choice for any humble bundle. So there you go. But like I said, 15 bucks. That's just, it's just a stupid good deal. Just go now, buy it. Don't hesitate. With uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of items in it's, here. It's... If you do the full fifteen dollar kit and caboodle, you're getting a metric crap ton of content. Well, well worth the fifteen dollar price of admission. All right, then let's then go and see something that's maybe on the other end of that scale, <laughs> where from the tabletop. We have an announcement. Oh, an announcement that just about everybody was expecting, I will have to say, of, of at least some level or the other. And that is Descent Legends of the Dark has been announced by Fantasy Flight Games. Yeah, Fantasy Flight needs to work on their teasing ability just a little bit. Because <laughs> they did kind of like tease this, but then during their, I think it was the Gen Con? Yeah, it was during the... Uh, flight report at gen con which of course this year was all online uh if you watch that at, at the very end you know they were like oh well that was a good stream we're off air oh and i didn't have time to talk about this and they held up this box and they're like no wait we're still on the air and the guy's like oh and they yes. slowly puts it down so yeah slight little um not tease but tease but it's official it's coming now descent legends in the dark this is an app-powered dungeon crawler with dungeons of miniatures, or dozens of miniatures, <laughs> dozens I should say. Of miniatures. Dungeons of miniatures? Well, there's probably that too. Uh, and a hero quest-style 3D terrain in a very, very big box. Right. And with that very big box comes a very big, scary price tag too, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, I'm looking at this thing, and I, frankly, I'm looking at this thing, and it's not grabbing me. Okay, well, let me talk about it, and then, I because I have some feelings on this. Okay. But Descent Legends of the Dark is not the third edition of Descent, which they, uh, they had, like, this reveal at Spiel, and they really stress the fact that this was not... The third edition of Descent. This is not even compatible with the second edition of Descent. This is a brand new dungeon crawler game that is going to share the same theme and some of the mechanics with the predecessor game, but it's a new experience. Uh, of course, it's going to be app driven. It's a fully cooperative campaign style game. Uh, the box, as I said, a very big, big box. A hundred and seventy-five dollar MSRP. Yeah, let's we'll, we'll let that sink in. One hundred and seventy-five dollar. All right. Well, of course that that is the MSRP. Uh, I checked on Miniature Market; they have it for one forty-nine. So a little better, but still, holy crap! It's going to feature sixteen missions uh, for the heroes to embark upon throughout the world of Tyranov. Sixteen. Yes. This is just the first campaign, though. It's entitled Blood and Flame. It's going to have 16 missions. Act 2 and Act 3 are going to release in a similar-sized box. So let's that sink in. same size <laughs> box for an undisclosed price in the future. I.e., more than likely, the same damn price. 
Yeah. My guess is it's going to be the same price. So we'll see. So you're going to get 16 missions for $175. Uh, the core game, as I said, uh, has 16 missions. It is set in a descent fantasy setting of Tiranoth. Uh, it's called the Blood and Flame Campaign. Each chapter is going to feature uh, differing objectives, but we'll see the players face enemies in combat. Uh, bandits could be barbarians, could be undeads. Whites, golems, you never know. The enemy's behavior will be controlled, of course, by the app uh, with unique strategies for each type of enemy and the ability to adapt to the player's actions during the encounter, which is kind of cool that they actually can pull that off. That's some good AI if they can pull that off. Right, because I know that was the weakness in the in Descent 2nd Edition. Yeah. So that, was my, that was my biggest problem with... Uh, second edition so if they can pull that off we'll see and of course uh, in between quests players are going to be able to visit, visit the city where you can get new equipment upgrade existing items craft new weapons and materials uh, do recipes uh, with gold acquired during your dungeon crawl experiences uh, all the weapons that are in the game can be upgraded and players are going to be able to gain a, a chance of inflicting bonus damage and effects when attacking based on the arms, the their arms secondary ability. All of that will be handled by the app, of course. Of course. Uh, this, once again, they stressed, is not the third edition. This is an all new game. With that comes an all new art style yeah which can i just style. <laughs> can i just say right now fantasy flight if you're listening which i doubt you are but let's say somebody from fantasy flight is listening right now your art style sucks these cards are horrible if this is actually final art which i hope to god it's not and if you're watching the youtube version of this uh you'll be able to see the cards on the screen right now uh if you're listening to the podcast you can go over uh, to ddo players and check out the article here on this but this art style is horrendous i really dislike this art style but we'll, we'll see i will say that this is what pushes it from a unlikely to a no way in my book <laughs> you know i'm uh, i am on the fence about this because god i love descent but that art style I, uh, yeah but uh we'll, yeah. Look, we'll see i've got a ton of stuff for Gloomhaven still to get through. Me too. And I find everything there a lot more to my taste than this is. Yeah. So if you're trying to pull me from Gloomhaven, this is not the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> not the way to do it. Which, you know, let's be honest. This is Fantasy Flight's reaction to Gloomhaven. I mean, let's just... Wrong to reaction. Let's just totally be 100% honest what this is. Um, this is definitely their reaction to Gleamhaven, but I just that, that art style, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, this is uh, projected to be released uh, first quarter of 2021, so not too longish to wait. If you can get past that art style, I'm telling you, that art style is horrendous. Uh, does have 40 plastic miniatures. That's for the heroes and the monsters. Uh, lots of cards, tokens, dice, and other materials. Uh, this is one to four players, 14 and up. Uh, they do say that each scenario is going to take about two to three hours to play. So I guess if they take two to three hours per play. Now, I don't know if that's... Per, I'm hoping that's not per person. Because if you have like six people playing... or four players and it's two to three hours per player that's insane so but of course we all know how well game times work on boxes too when they say oh yeah. this game takes 60 minutes to play no no it does not but <laughs> <laughs> i digress with that uh so i get okay so let's say they each take two hours to play there is 16 missions i mean i guess for 100 and well we'll just say that MSRP price of $175. Uh, 16 missions times two hours. That's 32 hours of gameplay. I, I guess that's yeah. not bad for your money, I guess. Yeah. A lot of it also depends upon how repeatable are these missions. Right. That's the thing with the second edition. You can, I've repeated 
missions before and stuff changed in them so i would assume this would be the same but then again this is not compatible with the other it's not even it's so who knows this is a its own beast so we'll see i am semi excited about this i was way excited about it until i saw the artwork and the price tag so i'm i don't know i just i just don't know but there you go Descent Legends of the Dark. <sighs> Let's then go and see what's coming in on the screen. Where it seems like Hasbro, Hasbro has developing a live action Dungeons and Dragons TV show. Now, is this playing Dungeons and Dragons or are we talking about a story dramas set in the world of Dungeons and Dragons? It sounds more like it's that, but we really don't know. Uh, this was... Uh, Hasbro is just weird and Hasbro is doing some really weird stuff. Well, Especially, after the whole thing with uh, <laughs> with a certain other game. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't get Hasbro. Uh, the way they announced this was the most bizarre thing. Uh, they did their um, conference call to talk about their Q Q3 2020 earnings. And the CEO, Brian Goldner of Hasbro, uh, was talking about, of course, you know, he talked about all their other games, and he talked about Magic, then he talked about Dungeons & Dragons. And when he was talking about Dungeons & Dragons, he stated this. We are working on a couple of different approaches to D&D. Uh, one of those is a television series. To produce the series, and we are putting together a team from Hasbro Entertainment and wizards of the coast to develop the show he did he did then go on to say there's been a very strong interest in a D, D tv series we've talked about how many global streamers and terrestrial broadcasters have been interested in D, &D. so that makes me think it's going to be just like a critical role type people are going to be playing D, D. but then i read another interview where he expanded a little more but not a lot and it made it sound like it wasn't going to be that. It was going to be a live action show. Like a, you know, just a, a I guess we'll just say drama for the lack of a better term. Like just a fantasy show. So I don't know. We don't know. That's all they said. Hmm. Um, so that's all we know. Uh, we do know that D&D &D was up 20% this year in sales. And they attributed that mainly to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic because lots of people are playing D&D &D now because of that. Well, it's obviously a lot of that must be online. Oh, it is. It is. Yes. It, yeah. Oh, oh, it is. Yeah. Because face-to-face um, -face play in D&D &D must be down. I saw – oh, man. I should make an article about this. I don't even remember where I saw the numbers. Like um, online plays of D&D &D are up like it's – crazy at how many on the like at any average time there is like 50 different streams of DD going on or something like that and there's usually more than that so yeah a lot of people are playing DD online which of course you know covid's helping that but so there we go that's all we know um i've reached out to hasbro pr many 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 times and they haven't got back to me yet uh, so I'm going to keep trying because I'm trying to find out exactly what's going on with this. And like I said, I wish I could remember the other site. I did see uh, he did make a statement to another site that didn't really clear anything up. It just confused me even more. So there's some type of D&D &D TV show coming, be it a TV show, be it live play. Who knows? It's coming. Hasbro running D and D into the ground since 2020. <laughs> oh, Hasbro! Well, well, we'll have to see what goes on with that. With that, let's head into our week in gaming. And 
Drac, what were you up to? Thank you, next. Really? Really? <laughs> really? Uh, hmm. Really? Uh, yeah, it was. I had the week from hell, so yeah, I didn't do anything gaming whatsoever. Um, my gaming PC, I can't even remember the last time I even turned it on. So that's that. So there you have it. Um, I attempted to do a couple videos for the site that are gaming related, I guess, but those we're not going to talk about those. I got to redo those. There was an issue with my camera. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just been one of those weeks. So yeah, apparently so. So, yeah, hopefully this week gaming is in my future. We'll see. We will see. As for me, I have been spending a great deal of time with a certain other game, but let's get into games other than that, where I do have a few of them. First of all, for DDO, I did run the My Alchemist with your character. So we did run that through the Lost Gatekeepers. We went through that series, and that little cottage is very very familiar with us right now <laughs> <laughs> it is and i forgot that was like last thursday we played so i guess technically that was this week and yeah. that was the that was the last time my gaming pc was turned on so there you go then of course there was the situation that we finished that at level three so i said all right i will go and try to get up to level four so, or maybe even level five so we could be all ready for feywild I managed to do the two quests left in the Cerulean Hills that we didn't do because they're not related to the Gatekeeper's quest. And that's where there's smoke and the captives. At that point, oh, yeah, I... Yeah, I forgot those were out there. Yeah, those are out there. Then I reached level four as a result of that. So I ran a few of the Sharn Conspira... Sharn Syndicate quests. The Stand Your Ground, Dirty Laundry, Storm Reaver, Fresco, and Repossession. So I got through all of that, and of course, as usual, you have the headache of trying to chip those items in the vault. But this time I did have a hireling there, and my hireling must have been good at breaking those crystals, because it, it looked like when my hireling was actually participating in it, they were getting through those crystals pretty quickly. I had thought of the idea, hey, what if I buy a magic missile wand? Maybe that'll help me to breakthrough didn't it help a bit <laughs> okay then all right well that didn't noted help. now what i did noted right after i did that quest and when i got to the next level no not to the next level when i got to the next step where i was going to add another enhancement i found out that the next enhancement i got allows you to view a special ability onto your weapon which is like shadow something like shadow weapon or something like this and one of the things it does to your weapon when you do that is give it force damage if that would have been handy that would have been handy five seconds earlier i should <laughs> so yes i really should have prioritized that ability a little bit more so that i could have bought that sooner but obviously i didn't think about it but anyway, so I finished all that. I still need a little bit more before I'm going to get to level 5. I have a feeling I'm not going to do that before before tomorrow, which is when we're expecting to start on the Feywild. But eh, we'll at least be able to get on some early stuff on Feywild, and maybe it won't be too horribly tough on us. And of course, if worse comes to worse, there's always the pine leaf solution to that little problem. <laughs> Which is casual. Oh well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> Smooth jazz and smoking jackets. What am I thinking? Yes. Yeah, so, well, we will. I will, of course, attempt to avoid that particular item if at all possible. Then I also did some Minecraft where we we're doing some Mage Rage where I was doing Week Four, and they also had a Week Five for October, and then there. In the first one, in the week four one, it was dodging fireballs coming out of the sky, which is a bit annoying to do. And then on week five, which whenever there is week five, because usually there isn't a week five, even when there are five Fridays in the month. But when there was, it's usually a really weird 
world, probably a testing world or a world that you yeah, testing world is probably the best way of putting this. So he used the overgrowth world from one of his Are You Hardcore runs. So the entire place was overgrown with bamboo all over the place. <laughs> trying to trying to see all over the place was quite the challenge in that particular run. But at least I didn't have fireballs coming out of the sky. That's all I got to say about that. Then in board gaming, because I was playing all that Lotro, I had very little board game time. But I did get three games in. And the first of these was Commands and Colors Napoleonics. It was my first play with the Napoleonics version of the game. And then, because the SoloCon we're currently running is encouraging to get the dust off of some very, very game old games that you haven't played in a while, so I decided to go way back and brought out Careers. I don't know if you're familiar with that game, Jack. No, never heard of it. You never heard of careers. Not Ooh. it's not sound or familiar. Well, it was for me very much a childhood favorite. And it's gone through several, several editions over the years. The one I originally had was the Parker Brothers edition. And Parker's Brothers put out about four or five different editions over time in there. Then I think the one I have now is by Pressman because my original Parker Brothers one I think disappeared the last time I moved. So think of it as hmm, what's the best way? To, I'm trying to see what you compared. It is was done in the '50s, so you could imagine the style of game it is. Because so roll and move in many of the style are in is one of the major components to the thing. But some of the things that it has that you don't have is that each player sets their own objectives for the game. Okay. Which is, which is something that is unheard of for doing in, in a 50s era game. And the second thing, so you, therefore you set your, your victory conditions that you will have at the beginning, and the first person to meet their victory conditions is the winner of the game. Obviously, there are criteria for victory conditions so that you don't set them very low or anything like this. But yeah, the idea is you're trying to get a certain amount of fame, a certain amount of happiness, and a certain amount of money. And whoever meets their formula first is the winner of the game. So you have that. Then you can mitigate the roll and move by the use of experience cards. And you gain experience cards by going down career tracks. So it's called careers because you have all these little career tracks all over the place where you leave the main board and go into this secondary area where you get either good things or bad things in there. But anyway, it's always been... One of my favorite ones, especially back when I was young, where I was always playing that particular game. And I figured I hadn't played Careers in a long time. And I was thinking about bringing it out again. And when the solo con theme got announced, I said, whoop, that made that an obvious one to bring out. Oh, yeah, I got to say, that was perfect. <laughs> and I'm certainly the only person who's right now brought out a game that he hasn't played out in 20 years. <laughs> and then the last of these that I brought up was something go from 20 years to 10 months now is D-Day Dice, which I didn't haven't played since January. And D-Day Dice, I don't know if you've ever played D-Day Dice. I've never played it. I've yeah. seen it before and I've seen it being played, but I've never actually played it myself. It is ludicrously brutal. And I would say that if it weren't, I guess because of the theme, I guess it fits considering how brutal it is landing onto onto a beach in D-Day in the first place because that was probably one of the most brutal places to be. So I could imagine, let's just say the brutality of the game fits with the theme. So I guess if you're expecting a walk in the park you probably want to buy a game called D-Day Dice. Well, probably not. Yes, but anyway as predicted, I got mowed down by machine gun fire trying to trying to take on the beach. And that was my week in gaming. We currently have 14 supporters on Patreon, and if you'd like to help support DDO players, you could go to the donations page. You could support the Players Alliance on Patreon. Your money would be used for our podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for our live shows. If you would like to donate without becoming a patron, please contact Drac at Drac at DDOplayers.com. 
We did not receive any emails this week, but if you like, since when you can send it to podcast at ddoplayers.com and you can also follow us at Twitter. It's Players Alliance at Players Ally, DDO Players at DDO Players, Dracula at Dracula at Score 72, and Piney Fat Piney with Needles. The Players Alliance has two shows. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have DDO Players News, and on Saturdays at 8 30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Loach Players News. You can join us for our shows at ddoplayers.com slash live. And you had an announcement, track. Yes, about the podcast for the month of November. This is probably going to be the only podcast this month. What? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a month for me. Uh, we might probably have a special edition of the podcast or something I'm working on. I don't know when, so it might be next week or it might be the week after. But more than likely, other than that, uh, no more podcasts for the month. Uh, just It's just going to be a month from hell for me. So sorry about that. But it's just, I just, I was trying to figure out schedule wise how to make it happen. And the only time I'm going to be available to record is not going to be a good Pinely Friendly time. So it's just gonna so yeah so this is more than likely other than maybe next week or the week after special edition of the podcast stay tuned on that uh i'll announce that when i actually finalize some plans but other than that uh yeah no more podcasts for the month we'll be back in december and it looks like december we should be good because actually christmas and new year or christmas and christmas eve doesn't fall on podcast night so we should Yay! be able to record every other than one week because i do something that interferes every three weeks and that got moved to wednesdays so um that'll be one week we won't have a podcast in december maybe but december's looking good november not so much not so much <sighs> so sorry about that but there you have it we're not going anywhere we're just little small November break. And that's it for tonight and most likely for this month. <laughs> yeah. And until December, this is Pine Mules reminding you to quest responsibly.